And it gives me great concern for my friends and my patients who are caught in, enamored in the throes of the paleo your philosophy that uh, you know, the caveman, every, every caveman had a mastodon in the freezer and spent all day eating mammoth meat, man. Every meal I eat meat, I'm a flesh eater, that's what I eat. Well, it turns out it's not true. <laughs> when they examine the fossilized fecal remnants uh, from these Paleolithic camps, massive amounts of fiber. <laughs> Most of the calories that were brought into the ancient Paleolithic camps were gathered by the women who spent all day pulling up roots and dubers and legumes and gathering berries and nuts and edible grasses. Once again, the women got us through the tough times. This whole idea that all we ate was flesh back then is, is, is fantasy. Our intestinal tract from our simian uh, ancestors uh, grew up, all the monkeys and apes that were related to, they all spent all day eating leaves and, and that's what our gut is, was designed to, uh, to eat as well. But I fear that uh, my paleo friends and patients are going to set themselves up for an epidemic of colon cancer. And we've had our first one show up uh, at the clinic um, three weeks ago. I don't think it's going to be the last. Uh, so meat and eggs summers up a bunch of bacteroides in your gut there that does, does unfriendly things. But when you put a bunch of whole plant foods down there, salads and, and whole grains and legumes, etc., that sums up bacteria in the Prevotella family. And these are good guys. Um, and they put out short-chain fatty acids. They turn the fiber into short-chain fatty acids, which suppress inflammation and stabilize tissues and suppress cancer growth. So the food we eat determines the microbes that live in our gut. Or the food you eat determines the microbes that live in your gut. And every meal makes a difference. Here's another example. Food we eat determines the bacteria live in our gut. <clears throat> if you are eating a flesh-based diet, you are, every piece of meat you eat, you're eating a big bolt of flesh that has a nutrient in it called carnitine. And every egg you eat floods your intestinal tract with another molecule called uh, choline. Well, you drop carnitine choline down your gut two, three times a day, you're going to sum up bacteria like peptostreptococci and clostridia that eat carnitine, that eat choline. They can't wait for that next chicken breast to come down, for that next piece of beef, for that next salmon steak to come down. Because they don't care about you. They're going to take that carnitine and choline and they're going to turn it into stuff called trimethylamine, nasty, foul-smelling stuff, which then passes through your liver, which, which then oxidizes it to trimethylamine oxide. This is a molecule from hell. This drives cholesterol into the artery walls. And it's no accident that every 33 seconds in this nation, someone grabs their chest and falls over dead with a heart attack um, because we eat a flesh-based diet. And we've got this, this uh, TMAO factory churning away in the guts of most Americans. Which gives me concern about my paleo patients and friends um, who are doing exactly this. And, um, and I fear they're setting themselves up for an epidemic of heart attacks and strokes. You know? And the scenario, the trim, fit-looking guy drops dead at the treadmill and for, at age 49. Ooh, he looks so fit, but on the inside of his arteries, he's an old man. And um, your house cat will never, ever, uh, no matter how much flesh they eat, will never produce um, trimethylamine and trimethylamine oxide. They are, they are flesh-burning creatures. Um, we, however, when you throw flesh down a plant-designed uh, digestive system, you wind up getting all sorts of uh, problems.